So I decided to do a sit down for this because I don't really feel like putting images up and editing and I just kind of want to talk about this because there's like so many things that I just need to discuss. So initial thoughts of Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, what it did good, it, f it fucking blew my expectations out of the water. I mean, in terms of what we saw, I mean, the fight scenes, remarkable. Never have I seen something more brutal. And this is the and this is the fitting fight to, to make it brutal. I mean, you have Godzilla and Kong. I mean, of any of the fights that we've seen in this MonsterVerse, this is the one that needed to be the most brutal, and they nailed it. In terms of seeing them clash, I really I can't think of or feel a complaint in me. Uh, that stuff was freaking amazing. Um, and some of the concepts that they played with are, you know, either creative and new or totally classic and amazing. Um, so for like the Hollow Earth, a lot of the stuff we saw in there, really good concept, better stuff than I could have come up with, better things than I made in my my plot, you know, prediction. I'm I'm gonna kind of get to my general negatives and then I'm gonna try to delve in a little more. My general negative with the movie is not what is in the movie, which is making it really hard to review, because what's in the movie is great. What I don't like about this movie is what's not in the movie. We know, we know for a fact this movie had been cut. We know for a fact that the story at some point changed. Not only do we have things like Mega Godzilla, which have never been explained, we have entire actresses cut from the movie. Uh, Z Zhang was cast for this movie. Not only was she cast, she was the first person cast. Her, I made a video about this in like 2018. It was uh, Z Zhang and oh, what's his name? I think it was like Van Martin or something. Was it's Doctor Doctor um, Chen and Doctor Chen's assistant were the first two people cast for this movie. She was supposed to have a big role in the MonsterVerse, and she's not even in the movie. Um, Adam Winger confirmed that Lance Reddick even had a bigger part in the movie in which Monarch had an entire mission that was cut from the movie. Which explains the five seconds of Kyle Chandler we see. The only reason we see it is because Maddie calls him. There must have been more there. When it comes to Jessica Henwick, an actress who was completely cut from the movie, who wasn't top billing, but was pretty up there. The actress that played... Um, the samurai girl on The Walking Dead. She was rumored to be cast, so that could just still be a rumor, but she's not in the movie. And we see set photos of things that don't exist. We see behind the scenes uh, shots of things that don't exist. And there's like, here, here's what I'm gathering from this. There, somewhere there is a two and a half to three hour movie here that we didn't see. Somewhere, there is an, a version of this movie that makes more sense. Here's my general gist. The film makes sense if it's a standalone, you want to see Kong and Godzilla clash, it checks every box. As a MonsterVerse film, I think they dropped the ball on this. And some of these things can be explained, but I'm going to go through the things that were not explained well. Ren Sarazawa and ETN pointed this out, and he's totally right. So much story potential there. They could have taken that, and they could have done something really cool with his connection to his dad and Mechagodzilla, but they didn't. Um, and Nathan Lind is an interesting character, because at least they try to give him a backstory, like, you know, my brother died going to the Hollow Earth. Show that, or explain that more. I want to see that. That's interesting to me. Because if we're going to follow him the whole movie, don't like throw in some kind of background and then don't elaborate on it. So I would love to see more of that. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry's wife. Why don't we see more of that stuff? Um, and Skull Island was a big one to me. What happened to Skull Island? Now, as people have told me, it's Kamazots in the comic that ends up creating the storm that kills the Ewes and kind of like makes Skull Island uninhabitable. If that's the case, that's fine. And if that's in the comic, that's totally cool, but they should have released the comics before the movie then. And my biggest gripe with the movie, the one thing that I think felt off about it, I don't buy Godzilla and Kong's rivalry. I don't buy it. I don't think they set it up enough. 
and I think it feels very out of nowhere. It feels like either A, there's a longer cut of this movie, which we know is true, or B, there's a missing movie between King of the Monsters and this. I don't feel the progression. And maybe the comics will patch it up more, maybe the novelization will give us a more extended look at the movie, but from what I saw in the theater yesterday, I don't buy their rivalry. When I see them face to face looking at each other, you can tell they hate each other, you know it's real, but I don't get it. I don't understand why. The last, the end credits of King of the Monsters, it teased it with the cave painting. So naturally you'd think this movie would explain the rivalry and explain the cave paintings. They don't. They just show you more of them and then they just mention there's a rivalry. I just don't buy it. Like, if, if they really have... So the movie puts Kong in the same level as Godzilla because when Kong is trapped, uh, Rebecca Hall, Eileen Andrews says we can't let Kong leave because Kong and Godzilla will kill each other, fight each other to the death because there can only be one alpha. So they put Kong in the same level that in an alternate universe, he could have been the one to be king of the monsters, right? We know Ghidorah is an anomaly. Um, so what they should have done so they put him on equal footing, they really should have explained in King of the Monsters that Godzilla and Ghidorah have fought each other before, but because he is an invasive species, this this messes up Godzilla's actual rivalry. Godzilla has an actual rival, it's Kong, but right now, you know, it looks like in the past Ghidorah has kind of interrupted that. They should have explained that more. What they did in King of the Monsters was fine. They laid the groundwork down. I think maybe they could have done more in Kong Skull Island to mention Godzilla. They, they probably should have done that. Here's a really easy thing you could have done. You go into this temple in the Hollow Earth, which by the way is cool. Now, in universe, we know that that was probably built by humans because in the credits of King of the Monsters, we know humans and titans used to coexist. It's just like the Atlantis thing. It's actually literally exactly the same. Godzilla has this Atlantis fortress that was built by people. Kong has this Hollow Earth fortress that was built by people. Really cool ideas, same concept. We get it. They could have explained it more for general audiences, but we get it. They could have done a simple thing where he run, walks around this little temple, and which they should have explored more, and they should have had like some kind of cave painting story. I know they do it all the time, but fuck it. We're already here. Just do it. Say, oh, well, you know, Godzilla and Kongs have battled for ages. Um, over over dominance or like they didn't even I know that you might think that that's implied but they didn't even say that kind of stuff which just makes it feel like that would have been so easy to just say that's what this movie should have been this movie should have given me more answers than questions but it did the opposite it feels like this movie is just so out of the realm it actually feels like the most closed off movie uh, since 2014 if you want to be honest um, because it just feels so distant from King of the Monsters, and the, the year gap is not the problem. This could have been 50 years after King of the Monsters. They don't fill you in though, and it feels like something's missing, and it really feels like we could have used another movie uh, <laughs> before this one, but after King of the Monsters, because the end credits also talk about monsters going to Skull Island. Is that gonna be explained in the comic? Because Skull Island is now a washed up kind of, you know, storm thing. Did Kamazot stop that? Why were they going to Skull Island? None of this stuff is explained, and it's a little confusing. Another thing I don't understand, how did Godzilla know to drill a hole in the Hollow Earth? We know Mechagodzilla was communicating with Godzilla, the brain was making him do shit. Or how did he know to go exactly to the point Kong was at in the center of the Hollow Earth and blow a hole right through? Now maybe all the titans, they say they all come from the Hollow Earth is a theory, maybe he just knows where it is. Would he really need Mechagodzilla to, to tell him that? I I guess I just don't know. Um, and people say, you know, don't think too much about this movie. Yes and no, don't think about too much about anti-gravity being a thing. Don't think too much about Kong wielding a battle axe. Think too much about why those things are there, or why they exist. And that's the thing, a thing I think that the film just dropped the ball on. Um, and Adam Wingard says this is the definitive version. He says we're not going to get another cut, which makes me sad. So I'm going to read the novelization and hope that they patch up some of these things because, um, and I, Mechagodzilla, not a complaint. I don't have a complaint about that, except the fact that they could have delved more into Serizawa. Uh, that's really a complaint with that. Um, I will say this film had some things in it that I never knew I wanted to see. 
Can you? I still can't believe I watched a movie where King Kong kills Mechagodzilla. He rips Mechagodzilla's head off. Can you imagine Marion C. Cooper and Ernest Strzok and, and uh, Willis O'Brien sitting there in 1933 imagining 80 years later King Kong would be ripping off the head of a robot dinosaur? Oh my god, <laughs> have we come a long way. Yeah, I mean, the ending was great. I mean, I still don't know how I feel about Kong killing Mechagodzilla. It's, I feel like the Mechagodzilla fight was a little underwhelming because Godzilla didn't fight back. But I think I understand it because I saw a good comment on my, my initial live stream that they let Kong kill Mechagodzilla so that they could still make him look like a king. You know, he loses to Godzilla, but he's still a worthy monster. He's not a joke. You know, he's not just a loser. They gave him something else to do. Everybody wins. If you're a Team Kong fan, he killed the enemy. If you're a Team Godzilla fan, he asserted his dominance and Kong kind of accepts it. So everybody wins. Another small complaint is the ending. The ending, the non-verbal communication, legitimately confused me. So Godzilla just goes back to the ocean. Love those endings. I think that Godzilla was saying, I'm going to stay here. You are going to go down to the Hollow Earth. Get out of here. But it was hard to tell. He had this little head motion, like he tilted his head, like, move. But when he, when he turned away, his tail went like this. I, it looked to me like he was telling Kong to follow him. And I was like, oh, they're going to walk off into the sunset together. Maybe he was telling him to leave? I don't exactly understand. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I get it. I'm pretty sure it's like Kong drops the axe. Fine, you win. You'll go away. I'll go back to the Hollow Earth home that I've found. This film is t full, full of references. If you like the original Godzilla series, if you've seen all the King Kong movies, you're going to notice reference after reference after reference. Not just 1962 references. Uh, the film feels like King Kong escapes, if you want to be honest. Uh, Kong, a mecha, and a dinosaur. An evil guy is involved in the movie who makes a mecha, who it's powered by a power source. Kong is also led into the ground in Antarctica to find a power source. It's literally Kong is taken to the icy caves to find Element X underground. And then they have a mecha kind of thing. It doesn't exactly line up, but you know what I'm getting at. And that Apex guy, he feels like Doctor Who. I mean, he really does. You know, he's like, Mecha Godzilla is my creation. You know, he's like, he's like, the, <laughs> he's like this really goofy villain guy, but I love it. Um, King Kong's heart getting started. People, Sean said it was like, oh, the lightning reference. I felt it was like King Kong lives. They gave him heart surgery. They jumpstart his heart. Come on, it's the same thing. Kong's heartbeat is a 76 reference, that ending of 76. Um, Godzilla, when he comes to Hong Kong, uh, when he drills the hole in the Hollow Earth, straight out of the Heisei movie, there was like 15 seconds of that, that scene when he comes out of the water that I felt like I was in a 90s Godzilla movie. And I ate it up. I mean... It, that I that's some of the best shit I've ever seen on screen. I went to a movie and I saw Godzilla kind of raiding a city. This is the most evil and closest to the original we've ever seen him. Similarly, in his first attack in Florida, you get the you feel his presence and you're like, he's coming. This is fucking scary. So I haven't felt a Godzilla moment like that in since the the Heisei movies really. The opening credits. I saw what I think is Mothra, because in the opening credits there was a cave painting of Godzilla and Kong fighting. You can see a skull crawler in the back behind Kong and behind Godzilla, you see a flying thing, and it looks like Mothra, like a hundred percent. I don't know what else it could be, and I don't know where they're fighting, so who knows. They nailed Kong in this movie in terms of his personality. He feels like Peter Jackson Kong. He walks in all fours again, and he feels fantasy. King Kong is a fantasy character. Skull Island kept it a little more grounded. This film, they threw him into the fantasy realm, the Hollow Earth. It's fucking perfect. It felt like Peter Jackson Kong. I don't think Kong is in this universe uh, has felt more true to himself than in this movie. He's climbing buildings. He's uh, it, it just fe it feels like King Kong. Not that Skull Island didn't, but this feels like King Kong. And it was really, really nice to see that. And I really loved how they got into fantasy. 
and how brutal he is in this movie. He rips off the war bat head, he rips off Mechagodzilla's head. He doesn't give a fuck. That's all I can say about the movie, because my camera's running out of battery. What they had in this movie blew my mind. I saw images that I've been wanting to see my whole life, and I saw images I never knew I wanted to see before. I never knew until I saw it that I wanted to see King Kong and Godzilla beat the fuck out of Mechagodzilla. I never knew I wanted to see Kong rip Mechagodzilla's head off. And it was great. Geo was great. Again, the humans were good in the movie. I just think there needed to be more of them. There needed to be more explanation of them. Really needed to be more lore building in this movie. There's a lot of loose ends. Not necessarily the film ends with loose ends. It begins with loose premises that I think aren't developed enough. If I had to give the film a rating, I don't really do ratings. I could rank it. Um, I liked it better than Skull Island. Anything's better than King of the Monsters. It can't top 2014 still. And maybe I would say it top 2014 if... I, I knew, I thought going into this movie there would be a chance I would have it top 2014. But just because I see how much potential was lost in things that were cut that we either, um, you know, speculate could have been cut or things we know absolutely were cut, I feel like this movie could have been 10 billion times better. But second favorite of the MonsterVerse... Um, this thing probably is the most rewatchable out of all these movies. I will say that. So, if I had to give a rating, I would give the original, I would give 2014, like, a 9 out of 10. Because there's some, there's a couple little things that I wish they fixed. Kong Skull Island, I would give, like, a 7 out of 10. King of the Monsters, I'd give, like, a 5. I'd give this, like, a 8. I'm feeling an 8. It might go down to a 7.5. It might go up to an eight and a half. Right now, I'm keeping it at an eight. So, that's how I feel. That's my review. What do you guys think about this? Do you agree with my gripes? Let me know.